the people you see around me, this is a part of daily life, riding the trains of Ghana. I'm Errol Barnett, Inside Africa, and this week, my focus is transportation in the country's capital, the limitations and the lighter side. Home to more than 25 million people, Ghana is one of the most populous nations in West Africa. At least 4 million people live in and around the capital, Accra, making it one of Africa's largest cities. Its infrastructure is just like other African urban centers, aged from the colonial era and unable to keep up with the demands of a burgeoning population. These days, the city streets have become chaotic. You can just look around me, clogged as well, as more Ghanaians jump behind the wheel. Now, that's a result of a growing middle class here and cheaper imported vehicles from overseas. In fact, in 2011, there was a staggering 40% increase in ownership of light cars here. 40%. Add into the mix taxis, motorcycles, and minibuses, which here are called Trotskys or Trotros, and it becomes one massive transportation nightmare. But as we discovered when we posted a question on our Facebook page, Ghanaians see the funny side of their transportation woes. We asked locals for stories on how everyone gets around the city. Most suggested we read something called the Trotro Diaries. So we tracked down the man behind the diaries to see what it's all about. You must be Yao. Hello. How are you, man? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Let's get Yao to Odum is a 27-year-old business development manager at an automotive company. I'm right behind you. He met me at the bustling and frantic Kaneshi Market in central Accra, which is also a mass transit hub for the Trotros. Wow! There is a <laughs> lot of activity, yeah. a lot of energy here. Kind of crazy. I think I understand why you wanted to meet me here, Yao. So you get to have a feel of it. Yeah. So how did the Trotro Diaries come to be? So actually it started as a status on Facebook and then eventually people were interested. They wanted to share their experiences, so they put it on. So basically it's about what people go through to get to work and back from work. <laughs> Encouraged by friends, Yao published a blog and a Facebook group to collect the frustrating and funny stories of getting around Ghana. More than a thousand people now use his platform to sound off. I really hate it when people are singing in the Trasky. I'm like, this is not your car, dude. She's been talking for about 30 minutes non-stop. I guess the radio stations need her talent. Some of them are funny, some of them interesting, some of them are frustrating. So you can have an experience where you sit in a trotro, tightly packed, and this is just before work. So you can imagine the kind of pressure it puts on you. Some of the pictures people have shared with you, almost unbelievable. <laughs> what are yeah. some of the strangest things you've seen? Crazy interior decorations like, you can think of like you have a steering wheel that has virtually the soft part, the part that's supposed to be comfortable off, and just the metal part on. And other people doing crazy stuff in, in trotros. And they put interesting comments on the back. Interesting comments. Those are like what we call uh, trotro wisdom. You see, there's no government-funded mass transit system in Accra, so taxis and trotros fill the public's demand for fast and cheap trips. Trotros have cousins all over the continent, though, in urban cities. Johannesburg and Lagos also have some kind of loosely regulated taxi business. Millions of people use transportation like this each and every day. OK, who's first? So in the spirit of Yao's blog, we asked some of his friends to share what's in their Trotro diaries. OK, how's that? I'm good to go. My experience with Trotro has been good, bad, bad. Let me start with the bad experience. Uh, forgive me, there's a cab coming by. Okay. Don't look at him. 
Look at me, there are prettier things to look at. Okay, yeah. okay. Then I guess that one of those women carrying the vegetables or the fish. The stench was so much that <laughs> we couldn't see anything because they are adults and we all elder knows this way. I remember way back I sat in the trotro and there was this woman sleeping beside me and she was snoring and her head was like trying to put her head on top of my neck and it's really <coughs> seriously like there was a traffic. Seriously I don't know like I didn't know what to do. The driver of the trotro was singing the entire time like it could actually be that his part time was as a chorister in the church because he was singing a lot of hymns and it was really really entertaining for everybody in the car. People started singing along and it was like it was actually a really fun journey for me. Yes, you could get late, but if you really want to get to know a city, don't pick a taxi, pick a tour tour. Why is humor beneficial? Okay. Are you really going to change the world with a couple of jokes? <laughs> we hope so. So uh, what we hope to do with Trotro Dives is because we realized people go through so much tr stress to get to their offices, which might affect their output when they get to the office, we put a bit of humor in there. Where people in different churches all over Ghana and even other parts of the world share their experience. Now what this will do is it would help to lighten their mood so when they get to the office, they actually get to the office in a happier mood and be able to deliver. But you want to do more? Yeah, we want to do more. So what we're coming up with is uh, something we call the Trotro Diaries app. Now what that is going to do is that it's supposed to help people find their way about in town. Yao does want to bring about some kind of positive change. For the past few years, he's worked with the ISIC organization, a mostly student-run group he says is helping him learn how to become a change agent. So what ISIC does is we get students or youth in various tertiary institutions and then we train them. Like we partner with companies, corporate organizations, like. NGOs like PricewaterhouseCoopers, DHL, Electrolux. We have uh, Ecobank in Ghana, so many other companies. And what these companies do is that they help to train the youth so that by the time you're out of school, you're prepared for the world. So you have a professional training and you have youth leadership training. Yao has an NGO established with one friend from ISIC and will develop the Trotro Diaries app with another. So where do you go from here then? The app is the next phase of Trotro Diaries that we're hoping to make things better in the Trotro system. Beyond that, we are hoping to be able to liaise with government institutions where we can actually help to get the road more safe. So the future of Accra, Ghana is? In the hands of the youth. And we already taken it. The older people are doing something, but we are telling them, hey guys, you better do more because we are crazy for results. We are crazy for change. So we're going to put that change into Ghana because Ghana is for all of us and we need to make things work. So what would you, here or in here? Yeah. In here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to see for myself what everyone was talking about. After the break, Yao sends me along in a trotro. And life on the roads is just one aspect of Ghana's transit woes. From the trotros to the tracks, next. <laughs> 